Good morning jewellery makers, it's Elizabeth here from Argentium Silver and I'm really excited to be able to show you how to make this gorgeous, simple yet very stylish Argentium pendant um, from one pack of Argentium jump rings. So there are five 14.5 centimetre jump rings inside this pack and um, the tools that you're going to need for this particular project are the Argentium Flux, uh, the charcoal block, the micro torch and a suitable can of butane to keep it filled up and I have a selection of pliers that we will use during the um, various activities that we're going to do to make the pendant. So I've got some flush cutters which won't come in until the second stage, um, some round pliers and some parallel pliers I've got a pair of tweezers that I used for turning it over during the work process and also for dropping it into the safety pickle. And you will need some of the safety pickle, which mixes up with warm water. I keep mine, as you will have seen if you've seen the trailer, in a small um, slow cooker and it works brilliantly because it keeps it at temperature and periodically I just top it up with a little bit of extra um, uh, pickling powder and some extra water if it's getting a bit intense and then every so often when it's spent I will empty it out and start again. So that's the basic pendant that we're going to do. I will also show you how to make a more elaborate version, um, not necessarily with a hammered finish, but by taking one of the jump rings out of the looped ring kit so that's a 6.5 by um, one mil, one and a half mil wire jump ring, I think. And I've taken from the uh, the um, bow pendant and ring kit the shorter of the two pieces of 1.5 wire. Now I have knocking around at home a variety of gems that I've picked up, as I'm sure you probably do when you see them. Um, and then they sit in a box because you can't quite decide what to do with them. So this, the stage two of this pendant will be to show you how to make a really, really simple but relevant to the flower setting for it if you have the extra pieces. If not, it's an absolutely beautiful pendant just on its own. OK, so the other item I forgot to mention that you will need is your brush for your flux. I usually keep my flux um, in the lid of the flux bottle and then throw out whatever I've not used at the end of whatever I'm making. Um, in actual fact, I've probably put a little bit too much in there, but generally it saves me wasting material and keep dipping a paintbrush in and out. So we have the five paint, uh, five paintbrushes, five jump rings. Um, they are all fairly stiff and you will find it quite difficult to close them. What needs to happen is that they need to be annealed and annealing is the process of relieving the stress that builds up in metal when you're working it. These were obviously taken or made from a long piece of wire which is wrapped around as you would normally do with jump rings and that puts stress into the metal when that process takes place. So all we're going to do first of all is just to relieve the stress and to anneal the jump rings with the torch. Um, and it's quite difficult to see this in this light because it's quite bright in here to have enough light to be able to do it. So um, you're just going to have to trust me that I'm bringing this to the right temperature. So um, I'm going to anneal each one of these to get rid of the stress. Not hot enough to fuse it, but just to take the stress out of the material. And we need to do this to each of them. three of them. I'm just going to do the last two. This will mean that when you come to try and close the ends up they will close up um, nice and neatly otherwise you'll be struggling and if I've done this one once already then it'll get a second go. I think I probably did but it's not going to do it any harm. Okay so those are annealed. Turn the torch off 
and then what I'm going to do is pop them into the safety pickle now they've cooled down just to clean them and get them ready for the next stage so if we get the five and pop them into my safety pickle you're just going to have to trust I've got them in the safety pickle off at the side and um, we'll just let those clean up for a couple of moments okay so I've now pickled and rinsed off the pickle on the five jump rings and you will see that they are much softer and much easier to close so what you do is close up so that the ends are as neat and tidy as possible and pop them one at a time back onto the charcoal block so we'll do those and this one I closed already it's not fused but it's closed up as neat and tidy as you can and the same on this last one so there make sure they're not touching because what you don't want to do is fuse them to each other so taking my uh, argentium flux all I'm going to do is just flux over the joint that I want to fuse okay so the jump rings have now been uh, pickled and I've rinsed them off in some clean water which I normally just keep at the side uh, simply to remove any pickle residue so what we're going to do now is take each individual jump ring and just close the end up like so as you can see it's much much softer material now that's because it's had all the stress removed from it wouldn't it be nice if you could do that with human beings just warm them up a little bit and they'd all be stress-free we'd all we could all do with that at the moment uh so we're just closing the ends right up and if you can hear any little squeaking in the background and i'd already closed that one um it's not me squeaking it's birds who are singing in the garden that i cannot do anything about and wouldn't want to because they sound lovely so i'm going to flux each of the joints the thing to do is make sure none of the jump rings are touching each other because if they are and you flux you will find that you join the jump, jump rings together at a stage that you don't want to and i've closed that one up so well i can't see the joint there we are so i think that's flux on all of them and as I said, I keep my flux just in the lid, just for ease. So I'm going to pop that away and I'm going to fuse each one of these jump rings now. So you probably won't be able to see the flame, but trust me, it is there. And we're going to get these up to temperature ready so that the joint fuses. And what you're looking for is that the flux that's on the surface First of all, it goes brown and then it will actually start to disappear when this is getting up to temperature. I'm just going to warm that around a little bit more. And we're getting really near here. The, the surface of the metal begins to slowly change and get to a stage that it looks wet. And that is because it is actually um, molten. That's what's happening during the fusing process. So I don't know how well you can see this on my phone. But that one has now got up to temperature and has fused beautifully. I'm going to turn it around to do the next one. Repeat the process. So warm up the whole of the ring very gently. And slowly this will get to the right temperature. And we're just getting to the point now. As you can see, it's going molten and it's fused. Repeat the same process here. Obviously, the more, you, more of these you do, the more used to what you're looking for you become. So this is now getting near to temperature. The surface of the metal near the joint is changing. It's going sort of a matte finish. And at any moment now, it will end up looking like it's wet, she says. And it's just about to go now. Just getting there. And here we go just happening now so there's no rush you can take the torch in and out and it doesn't matter if you stop you can go back to it getting that that wet flowing that's happening there so that's fused take it around to do the next one and that's how we do them all
Okay, so I've gone in a little bit closer so that you can see more clearly, hopefully, what's happening. So, first of all, the flux dries and then it goes a brown colour. And you'll notice that mainly I'm concentrating onto the exact area that I want to fuse. Argentium doesn't um, conduct heat quite the same way as silver does. So the, the great thing is that this means you can just heat the area that you want to fuse. And it's just coming up to temperature now. If you look at the surface of the metal, you'll begin to see it's looking wet. And it's just at the fusing point. Now what you want is that flowing that you can see there. So we'll just do this one as well. And then all five will be fused. And again, we're looking for changes in the metal surface as we do this. I'm hoping this is clear enough on here. So it's gone very white and that's the precursor to it getting up to temperature. And it's getting very near now. You can see it's just beginning to look slightly wet in a minute which won't be a minute at all, um, you will see that it it looks very wet. We're just starting to see that happening now. And you see the surface of the metal is actually flowing. And there's that sort of wet rippling effect and it will flow over the joint. And you can see it's just getting wet on the surface and flowing. So those should all be fused now. I'm just going to go back to that one because I'm not entirely sure that I did as good a job as I might have done. So that's the trouble when the torch, the torch is getting low on gas. You will still have a flame and it'll still be making a noise but it doesn't quite get to the right temperature. So make sure you keep the torch topped up with gas. So there we are. And we'll just let these cool momentarily because the thing to remember with Argentium, never touch it when it's red hot because it's brittle at that stage. And what I'm going to do is turn these over one by one. Try not to pick up too much of the charcoal. And I'm just going to make sure that they fused all the way through. So just to be 100% certain, I'm just going to pop a bit of flux onto any of the joints that I can still see. It's easier said than done because some of them are quite definitely fused all the way through. So I'm just going to do a couple of those just so that you can see. Um, I could see a seam line on this one, so I'm just going to turn this, as I say, I've just turned this back over. I'm just going to bring it back to temperature, which will be much quicker because they are still quite warm. And there, its surface is gone. And just the same on this one. And what I should have done and you can do at home when you're not um, filming, is that to try and keep the surface of these on the flat, because the flatter the surface that you're fusing onto, the less distortion you'll get of any jump rings, because when you're getting them up to the point that the metal is molten, it is actually in a molten state. So it will take on the shape of whatever's underneath it. There, that one's just gone. And I think the rest of them are fine. So um, I'm going to do uh, what I don't tend to do when I'm in the studio and I'm going to pop them in the pickle for a few minutes. Well, if we were doing the film and then we were looking at continuity, I would have just failed as I've just replaced the charcoal block for the next stage. Um, so this is the stage that the jump rings are at now. So as you can see, they're nice and clean and the fused joints are great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a pair of parallel pliers and I'm going to squeeze at the widest point of the parallel pliers a flat and I'm going to do that in several places because what I'm aiming to do is to create a straight line so I'm going to do this and you will see that you start to get almost a D shape so I'm then going to take it down to the bottom of the, the line and I'm going to do it again and you will see that we start to get a bit of a, a point down the bottom and you do need some hand strength for this because this is quite thick wire 
I've done them with thinner wire and it's easier, but um, this is what you're aiming for. And you're going to take your steel block, which I have off camera here. And I'm just going to take my small one. And the thing I should have said that you also need in the tools is your um, nylon or hide hammer. And I'm going to try and knock this down a little bit to get it a bit more pointy. So I'm not looking for absolute symmetry on any of these. So I'm aiming for, for petal shape. So if I pop that one on there and I'll show you again, wide is part of the flat nose pliers and flatten it. It's a lot of squeezing uh, and repeat this. And it might feel like it's going nowhere, but eventually you will find that it does and you start to end up with a flat. Um, I'm not doing this terribly elegantly, but I promise you it does work. Um, it's trying to keep it in line with the camera. So I'm going to a bit of a whack with the hammer and take it back again. And same thing again is squeeze flat and squeeze and flat. And then we'll take it back up the other side. You can at this stage as well, if you want, re anneal this because these are surprisingly hard. So again, you can see we're getting more of a teardroppy shape here. And you begin, you start, you start to get the shape of the petals. So I'm going to cut this now and carry on and make the other three. Um, and then we'll be back to you. As you can see, I've made these sort of teardrop petal shaped. None of them are identical. And what I'm aiming to do is get as big a point of contact on this side sections of the petals as possible. So here, here, here and here and here, um, because what you're aiming to do is to get as big a section here to fuse. You will see when we start fusing that the metal draws along these lines. Um, and the best way to show you that really is to do it. So I'm going to flux between and I'm going to put quite a lot of flux on because I want the, the flow of the metal to be quite large. Um, so I'm fluxing between these. And the thing that you will notice in some places, you can see some of the original joints um, just because they are there and I haven't filed anything off. So if you want to cover those in flux as well, just to make sure that that carries on flowing during the fusing process, that's fine. So that's fluxed and ready to go. So I'm going to start by just heating all over just to make sure that the metal and the flux are dried out. With lighter, me lighter weight metal you will find that um, it may move a little bit. With this size wire which is 2 mil, it's not likely to. So I'll start warming and what I'm looking for as I've said, is to get this to the temperature that this will fuse. And we're getting near on these two. So we're looking for a flow of metal between the two joints. And of course, this always takes much longer when you're trying to film it and demonstrate it, but it will happen. We just have to be a little bit patient because there's quite a lot of metal here. Now the surface is starting to go. Um, I can see some movement. And we're getting very near temperature. Of course, it's never happening at the speed you want it to when you're filming it, does it? But it is going to happen. Unless, of course, I'm back to the situation I was just now where I needed to get a little bit more gas in the can, but I don't think that's it. So just coming up now. And my charcoal block just cracked. That's what you heard that went ping. There is a little bit of fusing between these two, but not as much as I want to see. So I'm just going to keep going 
um, you can see that the metal is starting to draw in the gap. We're looking for more than that. So what I might do is carry on round. And I'm just going to push this back into place a little bit. This is um, the joys of doing it under pressure. So I'm going to carry on and hopefully we'll get the whole thing so that it's coming up to temperature because we'll when I've done this, I'll flip it over and do it on the other side as well. So, um, bear with me. And of course, I can't really stop because then if I have to start the video again, you're going to think I've cheated. So, I am actually going to pause momentarily and put a bit more gas in here. This is just proving I'm human. Um, so we're off again. I'll make sure I put it up to the, the maximum setting all the way around and we'll start fusing again. Because the thing is, there is a lot more metal here than some of the lightweight items we've done. My charcoal bo blocks just pinged again, which is always a bit distressing. Um, I suppose this is marginally better than doing it on live TV because I could cheat, but I'm not going to. Um, you can just see the surface of the, the flux beads are starting to flow a little bit, which means we're getting very near temperature. And it will, any moment now, get up to temperature. I've made several of these and I've never had this problem, so I am sorry. But it's, it's actually good that you can see it happening. There, we're starting to get to the point now. Just going to warm around a little bit more, just in case it's me being stupid. Um, I suppose this would probably count as being like paint drying, but here we are, we're getting up now. Um, it's not helped in this light because I've got so much daylight coming through here. She says, trying to make an excuse. If you have a look at the, the middle joints now, there is a flow of metal between those. And we should be able to pull it down a little bit further, but maybe I'll do this on the other side. So if I go around to the next one, And these are going to take a little bit less heating because obviously we've been heating up the rest of the metal so far. My charcoal blocks continuing to crack. Um, so I'm a prime example of don't despair here because if you're doing this at home, you'll probably be stood, sat here thinking it's never going to fuse, it won't fuse, it's not going to do it, it must be me. It isn't. This will take some time because... This is quite a lot of metal you're asking to heat up and this is you see that the surface is becoming sort of quite gnarly on this one in a minute this will fuse famous arteroids uh, we're starting to get some fusing down the middle of that one we can correct this on the other side when we turn it over so don't panic unduly I'm going to move on to the next one because I am aiming to sort a lot of this out on the other side so I might just put a tiny bit more flux on here or actually quite a lot more flux as it happens but that doesn't really matter
this is actually although it's frustrating for you possibly watching and frustrating for me while it's happening it is actually quite good because it, you can tell that things happen to everybody it's not just you so if you're finding fusing a little bit daunting or a little bit slow to start with don't panic it happens to the best of us and just occasionally you will get a piece that's very slow to go but all of a sudden it will suddenly go Okay, so here's a quick lesson in how to make a really simple rustic collet. So we are going to take the um, six and a half mil jump ring and gently anneal it just to get the stresses out of the metal. Take that and quench it. I'm not going to bother pickling this one. Um, close it up, which will now be very easy because it's nice and soft and pop it onto the charcoal block, flux it, making sure the flux goes down the gap and fuse it together. And the important thing here is here, make sure that there's some part of the end of the jump ring touching so that when the metal starts to flow there's somewhere for it to flow to. So I'll just turn that around and that should have fused nicely. Let the colour go out of it because while it's still red, it's brittle as we saw in the piece I messed up earlier on. I'll just turn this over just to make sure that it's fused all the way through and it has. And I will quench that again, dry it off on the high tech tissue and pop it back down on here. Uh, now what we're going to do is we've got five, um, five claws in effect cut out of the 1.5 wire and I'm just going to place them around the outside ideally without them moving like that one just did of the jump ring You can take your time. I'm just trying not to do it too slowly because otherwise I think it might be a little bit like paint drying for you. So you can choose to put however many claws you like, but I've gone for five because I've got five petals. So reasonably evenly spaced. And you want them to be touching the um, jump ring. So and this one is determined it's not going to go where I put it. So we that roughly will do. And what I'm going to do now is take the flux and flood it onto each claw, like so. Or may not have had some, so let's just be sure. And then I'm going to fuse each one of those onto the jump ring. And what you're looking to do is see them suck up onto the jump rim because you want it to become one so that one's just going now so is that one and if you watch that one will go too i'm gently going to turn it around so you can see i'm just going to push that one up very slightly get up to temperature and it will move it's the joys of trying to film and do this let's try again hopefully this one will go but it probably won't and i shall be left looking an idiot is it going to go yes it is there we are and the last one which is going to move as well so let it cool enough that it's not going to disappear and then push it back up to the edge of the jump ring. Put the jump ring up to temperature and let it pull onto the side. Um, 
let the heat go out of this so you can see there's a little bit of red still and then flip it over that's what and why you don't touch it when it's really hot so i'm actually going to try and fuse that back in place and probably shall regret doing this but this is to show you two things now one is why you don't touch the metal when it's really hot and secondly hopefully what you can do if you're very careful now this is not going to be ideal and it won't still be round but it does show you that repairs can be made so heat up the rest of the jump ring and let the temperature go out of this a little bit move that back towards there of course if i was doing this and making it for somebody i wouldn't be doing it this way i would have started again but this is just to try and show you that things can hopefully be salvaged if they go wrong of course this is going to be famous last words Right, so one side of that has fused back on, that's fine. So I'm going to let it cool down again. And when it's cooled, I'm going to flip it back um, or try and pull it back with a pair of pliers so that it's in at least touching. So this is not something I would recommend doing, but it is just to show you that not all the time everything is lost if you break something. So what I'm now going to do is get this back up to temperature and hopefully get that bit there that has snapped to fuse back. That's the intention. So hopefully, like magic, that has more or less fused back into place. Not quite as round and perfect as it was, but it does give you the um, overall um, solution if you break something sometimes and you're cack handed like I was there. So, and because that bit hidden when in the stone sitting on top of it, it isn't crucial. You may decide you want to start completely again, but I'm just giving you an option in case you don't. So here you can see um, the one that I showed you at the beginning, uh, which I've turned up a collet to fit and the one that we've just made and made the repair from. So you'll see it's not perfect, but um, the way to get it to this stage, if you decide, I mean, you can fuse it into place just as stamens that way and not put a flower in it. You could equally put a pearl, um, have I got one, glued into the center or a bead. But if you want to turn them up into claws, you take a pair of pliers and you gently and the trick with this is gently ease the claws up like so and you just keep working round until you've got them shaped right upright and you then need to decide because if you drop that into place i'll take that out of the middle of there um clearly that i'm not going to be able to do this now because i'm being all crack handed um but when the stone's in place these are obviously going to be these claws are going to be too long so you need to trim them off which i generally do with a pair of snips because i'm lazy um to a length that you think will sit where you want them on the stone and then it's a case of gently gently easing um them over onto the edge of the i mean this admittedly was a pearl but it's a, a case of easing them over um and there you have it but before you get to the st setting stage if you fused this section oh, this one isn't it if you have fused this into place, um, I'll find the right one, whichever one it was that went with the thing. Uh, I'm going to be rubbing on. I think, obviously that one. If you fuse them into place, um, do all your clean up at this stage. So do your polishing um, and all your finishing, any barrelling that you're going to do. 
and then set it because once the stone's in place you don't want to be putting it in the barrel so that's how to make the um, very simple pendant and whether you want to choose to put the collet in or not put the collet in is entirely up to you but the results when you do are really very sweet I think um, these two were done actually exactly the same process but they were done with the um, looped pendant uh, sorry looped ring pendant I'll get there in a minute the looped ring kit um, so exactly the same process um, and really what you put in the middle is entirely up to you you can um, just as easily leave it without anything in or as we saw um, when it was flatter you can just have the central section and no stone so hopefully you'll enjoy making those as I say they can be made either from the set of five jump rings or out of the um, looped ring kit um, and there's enough in the looped ring kit that had I not um, done these as two alternative things you could make them up as a pair of earrings okay so that's the first one